I'm Sheila Banks. Welcome to PMUSA Newsline. Your response to the first two editions of Newsline has been tremendous, and we thank you for your important and direct contribution to the program. Please keep writing in with your questions, comments, and suggestions. First up on this edition of Newsline is CEO Forum with President Bill Campbell. Because many of you have asked about the ongoing changes at PMUSA, we asked Bill to discuss these changes. Well, I've spoken from the first day I took this job about the need for change. And just recently, during meetings with our regional salespeople, a phrase came up that expresses the philosophy that, that we need to have. We don't want to just keep up with change, we want to lead it. The lesson to be learned from the problems faced today by large companies like IBM, General Motors, AT&T, is that the time to change is when you're on top. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. Regarding some of our individual departments, for instance, in operations, the challenge is to maintain and improve our great quality across the board while being just as cost conscious as we possibly can. It also makes sense to give people new challenges and new things to do. And again, this is what we're focus on, focusing on in operations. In marketing, we have to be highly flexible with a response capability that gives us that edge on our competitors that we want to have. We have to be there first with the best. And when we're responding to competitive moves, we have to come back fast with something that's even better. In sales, the force has embarked on its own reorganization, all of it to meet the challenges of the retail environment. The Retail Masters Program, the focus on selling, and the shifting of decision making down to where the action is are all changes that will make us that much more competitive. Again, let me repeat the phrase I started with. We don't want to just keep up with change, we want to lead it, and we're going to. We move now to the Ask Senior Management portion of our program. As most of you know, the Supreme Court recently handed down a verdict in the chip loan product liability case. Because of the importance of that decision, we asked PMUSA Vice President and General Counsel Stephen Parrish to join us. Steve, thanks for joining us. My pleasure. You've been doing a lot of traveling lately discussing the Supreme Court decision with employees in Richmond, Cabarrus, Louisville. Has there been much interest in the case? Yeah, there's been a tremendous amount of interest in the case by the employees, Sheila, and I, I think that's for a couple of reasons. First, the case has been around a long time, and it's generated a tremendous amount of media interest and coverage, both when the case was tried in 1988 and then when it was argued in the Supreme Court. Interest must have picked up, too, when early reports indicated that this was going to be a defeat for the tobacco industry. That's, I think that's true. There certainly was a lot of misinformation that went out in the few hours immediately after the court's opinion came out. Fortunately, as people had a chance to read the entire opinion and analyze it closely, they realized that it was, in fact, a significant victory for us. And, in fact, our stock closed up the day of the decision. So then, for those of us who are not legal experts, could you please explain why this is a victory? Basically, what the Supreme Court said is that based on a 1969 statute, two of the most significant claims made against uh, the industry in smoking and health ca cases are now preempted or barred, and that's why we felt it was a significant victory for us. Now, in your travels to the plant communities, what are the most frequently asked questions? One question that I've been asked many times is whether the Supreme Court's ruling applies to lawsuits filed in state courts as well as in federal courts. And the answer to that question is that clearly it does. It applies to damage claims in state courts as well as federal courts. The other question that I've gotten quite frequently is what are the implications of this decision? Will this result in new lawsuits? And in my opinion, clearly we are not going to see a flood of new lawsuits against this industry uh, based on the Supreme Court's decision. There may be a few cases filed, but clearly not, a, not, not the floodgates. I understand, though, that because of the Supreme Court decision, there is a chance that the Chipolone case could be retried. Is that a possibility? Well, it's certainly a possibility. What the lawyers for the Chipolone family will have to do is sit down and look at the Supreme Court decision, analyze it, uh, and see how much of their case is left and decide if they want to go ahead. The judge in Chipolone has indicated that he would not be able to try the case until at least sometime next year. And 
whenever the case is retried, if it is retried, I'm very confident about our chances of uh, defending the case successfully. Okay, Steve, thanks so much for further clearing this up for us. Consumer excise taxes are a continuing challenge to our company, and they're the subject of this edition's Focus on the Issues. Many people are not aware that they pay an extra hidden tax every time they purchase a pack of cigarettes. Unlike a sales tax, which appears right on the receipt when you buy a product, excise taxes are hidden in the price of the product. The federal government charges 20 cents in tax on every pack of cigarettes sold in the United States. Each of the 50 states adds their own tax on cigarettes, as do hundreds of cities and local governments. Add it all up, and smokers are paying nearly $13 billion a year in extra taxes. The good news is that voters and their representatives are becoming increasingly skeptical about excise taxes. One such critic is Ohio legislator Dale Van Viven. In my opinion, the problem with the excise tax is, number one, it's regressive, it hurts the poor, it hurts the underprivileged, the, the blacks, the minorities of all kinds, as opposed to the middle class and the upper class. Secondly, it does not develop the kind of money that we as politicians think it will when we don't take into consideration the states surrounding us and what their levels of excise tax are. If they are lower, we lose the income, we lose the retail sales, and most importantly, we lose the jobs connected to those sales. Representative Van Viven isn't alone in his opposition to excise taxes. In the 1991-92 legislative session just ended, more than 90 percent of state excise tax proposals decided so far have gone down to defeat. But as state and local governments continue to feel the budget pinch, we can expect plenty of new excise tax proposals when legislators meet again this fall. Now let's move on to a topic that concerns all of us. One of the most troubling issues to Americans today is crime. And in June, Philip Morris sponsored a conference aimed at educating convenience store employees about how to deter crime while on the job. PMUSA Newsline reporter Cherie Graham reports from the crime conference. Every few seconds, a retail store is robbed at gunpoint in the United States, sometimes with tragic results. Across America, convenience stores like this one are all too often a target for robbery and murder. Here in South Florida, Peter Battelle, a convenience store owner, was shot and killed in just such an incident. Battelle was a customer and business associate of PMUSA Salesforce unit manager, John Sapi. We found the funeral to be a very, very moving experience. Mr. Patel is a very close business associate of Philip Morris. As a result, it started us thinking about what can we do to educate the retailers better on how to deter violent crime. As a result, we've devised a program and brought it to our section director, Wade Lott. He thought the program was great and said, let's do it. John's idea developed into a one-day crime conference sponsored by the Philip Morris Companies. More than 300 convenience store owners gathered here in Port St. Lucie to hear law enforcement professionals talk about crime prevention. Why a crime conference? Rick McAllister of the Florida Food and Fuel Institute. There are two reasons why this conference is not only important but critical. First of all, the chain stores have resources and facilities to do training and share information about these issues. Smaller retailers don't. and We have a hard time as an association reaching those people, so you're really providing a valuable service. Secondly is visibility. The more visibility and information we can give to the public, to the media at large, the better off we are. So Philip Morris is really doing something great for the industry, and we encourage them to keep it up. The conference brought together law enforcement officials from throughout the state, as well as the Florida Deputy Chief Attorney General. Philip Morris representatives stressed the importance of obeying local age requirements for the sale of tobacco and alcohol products and outlined the Philip Morris It's the Law program. Corporal Dennis Burness, Community Program Supervisor for the St. Lucie County Sheriff's Department, noted that it's important for companies like Philip Morris to get involved in crime prevention. It's important simply for the fact that law enforcement can't be everywhere at once. Uh, with programs such as this, as the Robbery Deterrence Program and the assistance of Philip Morris Corporation, hopefully we can make our community a much more safer place here in Florida. Was the conference a success? According to the store owners, it was a trip well made. Well, I think it's great. I think we need to have more of these more often keep them up to date. 
of the things that's really happening in the in the convenience store business. I like it. This, this is a very good program. Actually, some item I don't know. When I attend this program, I learn more uh, how to protect our store. I like it. It's um, making me think of things that I wouldn't have thought of on my own. I think it's great that Philip Morris Family of Companies decided to help us out. Philip Morris believes it has a responsibility to its customers and to the communities in which it does business. The Port St. Lucie Crime Conference is just another example of that commitment. Back to you, Sheila. Thanks, Cherie. I'm sure the seminar participants came away knowing that they have the full support of Philip Morris in their fight against crime. That's it for this edition of PMUSA Newsline. Remember, if you have questions or comments about our program, Please send them to this address, PMUSA Newsline, Philip Morris, 120 Park Avenue, 14th Floor, New York, New York, 10017. We'd like to leave you now with scenes from the exploits of the Marlboro Adventure Team. Team members travel to the American West to face the challenge of the rugged outdoors. I think you'll agree that these scenes illustrate the bold, free spirit of Marlboro. I'm Sheila Banks. Thanks for joining us.